One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and you are tuned in to episode one, episode two, I should say, of Jags Week in Review. I'm here with my buddy Jason. Jason, how are you doing today, man? I'm sick right now. I'm not feeling too good, but I'm um, excited to be back here for episode two. Everybody in the comments section, hashtag pray for Jason during this. Pray for Jason. <laughs> during this rough time. This rough Press time. F to pay respects. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody drop down to pay respects to Jason and his, his health. <laughs> He's only got 48 hours to live. Oh, man. Now, the doctor told me it was like 17 hours. Oh, God. Doctor. This is going to be – oh, yeah. fuck. We're going to have to cancel really, the podcast after two episodes. Really need, really need the, the Fs for our fallen comrade. Please. <laughs> Uh, so this week was a it was a little bit more quiet uh, as far as Jags news goes but there was uh, some things here and there and uh, you know one big thing that I think Jags fans want to talk about but we'll talk about that later on first and foremost let's talk about the two signings the Jags made Uh, one guy we didn't touch on last week uh, was Jake Ryan former linebacker uh, from the Green Bay Packers this guy reminds me a lot of Paul Puzlesny for all the way from playing style, being a true middle linebacker, and the size of his neck. He's got a thick neck, you know, and that's, <laughs> that's what you're looking for in a middle linebacker. If I'm, if I'm out there scouting middle linebackers, I'm judging them by the, the girth of their neck. And, you know, Jake Ryan has a good neck. So I'm thinking that uh, he's going to be able oh to gosh. be a successful part of uh, this Jaguar defense. What do you think, Jason? Um, in all honesty – I completely disagree. I think he was going to be he was going to be a starter for the the Packers, but I think we definitely need to pump the brakes mainly just because he did just tear his ACL um, last year before even doing that, and that's kind of why uh, the Packers let him go. Uh, he was going to be the starting linebacker, one of the starting linebackers for the uh, Packers defense. He tore his ACL. I know that they're bringing him in for at least like special teams work at least special teams work. I know he's going to be a big part of the special teams, but I'm not too sure how the defense is going to look this year. I think we might go linebacker in the later rounds to maybe pick up someone, but we'll see if he's going to be the new middle linebacker. I think that they might plug him in here and there, but I don't think he's going to start right off the bat. He might, he might not, but he is coming off an ACL injury. I think that's a long shot to say he's going to just come into a one really good defense who doesn't have a true middle linebacker, but who's going to come into a, you know, our defensive scheme and say, I'm going to be the starter. He's got to prove it. I'm not, in all honesty, I don't know if he's going to start, but I know he's going to be on special teams and it's going to be a pretty big part of that, that, uh, that core dynamic of the special teams. I think we've had pretty good special teams the last year or two. I, I agree with the fact that he's going to have to earn it. I mean, it is the NFL. You're going to have to earn everything. I mean, that's, that's a given, but uh, the Jacks signed him when, you know, he's he's advancing in his rehab. He's doing well. He's already – he's able to run drills. He's able to work out at, I think, 100% again. So, uh, I think when this guy comes into training camp, I think he's going to earn his way to be a starter. And then Telvin and Miles will come in during, you know, the nickel packages together. And um, I just – I like his playing style. He's good uh, – he's good at filling holes in at the run game. But, like I said, he, he does have the puzz tendency. His pass coverage is – not necessarily terrific or anything that to write home about, but uh, I'm I'm gonna have to say I think he will be a starter this year. I think that he's gonna be able to get his opportunity to play that middle linebacker position. I think he's gonna he's gonna play it well. I do agree with you though that I think the Jags should still go out and draft a uh, a linebacker. But would you rather just you know offhand question? Would you rather draft a middle linebacker, a true middle linebacker, to compete with Jake Ryan, or would you rather draft a safety to compete with Jared Wilson in the later rounds? I don't think. I think you could do both. In all honesty, and I don't think it's going to even come in the draft. I think after the draft and you know undrafted free agency, I'm sure you could find you know linebacker. I mean, I think we found with Telvin in like the later rounds. You know, we found we we found a lot of really good prospects and just every part of the team in the later rounds of the draft. I think we have a really good scouting team. So I think that if we could just draft maybe even a free safety or a regular safety, 
even another linebacker. It doesn't matter if it's going to be a middle linebacker. Cause I know, I know uh, Todd Wash likes to mess around with the defense a lot, likes to do different, you know, like schemes and stuff. I think that it's realistic that we get try to get both. I mean, even though this is going to probably be an offensive heavy draft for us, because that's what we really need. We need really big offensive weapons. I think it's going to be an off, uh, an undrafted free agency when we go for a linebacker and a, and a safety. You know, I think we could draft a, maybe a safety in the actual draft of seven rounds, but I think going linebacker maybe seventh round or maybe undrafted free agency isn't a long shot. Yeah, I think that, uh, like you said, the Jags, I think, are going to focus really heavy on the offensive side of the ball for about the first three rounds. At least that's what they should be aiming to do, in my opinion. But this draft is also very deep on the defensive side of the ball. So there are some guys that will be there maybe in the second, third round that the Jags are going to want to snatch up at a position you need, like a linebacker or a safety even. Um, and that's, that's definitely doable. And like you said, you know, the Jags have found some defensive gems in the later rounds. I mean, Telvin Smith, your example. We snatched up Ronnie Harrison last year in the third round. I mean, there's – like, there's one thing to say about Dave Codwell, though his first-round selections haven't been hit, hit, hit. His, his, his late-round picks have more often than not been uh, solid hits for the Jags. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, the last signing I'm going to be talking about here for the Jags, we got uh, James O'Shaughnessy. Uh, what, do, what do you think about that one, James O'Shaughnessy coming back into town? I mean, we have four tight ends on the roster whom I don't even think are going to be starting. Maybe besides Swaim, we have O'Shaughnessy, Swaim, Koyak, and uh, Farrah McEver, who I've never even really heard of. Yeah. Um, O'Shaughnessy really, like, I like, because he, he was released by the Patriots, I think, a couple of years ago, and that's when he came over. I think it was, it was released or trade. I don't remember. Uh, it was two years ago, though. I know that he's played in about 30 games, um, started 10 of them, uh, I think he's going to be decent. I think he, I think he's going to be in the the rotation with him, uh, him and Swaim. And I don't think Koyak or McEver is going to be on the team. They, one of those might, well, guys might be on the practice squad, but I don't think both of them are going to be because that's a waste of a practice squad spot with two tight ends that you really aren't even going to utilize. Because I mean, you just don't need them unless unless of course bearing injury. But I think that we still get a tight end in the first or second round, um, either either Herb Smith or uh, Font or uh, Hawkinson. I just don't picture us having more than four tight ends or three or four tight ends on the whole team. So personally, I think O'Shaughnessy is a solid depth signing, and I think Swaim is going to be ahead of him on the depth chart. But I just don't see Koyak or McEver being there, so I think O'Shaughnessy is a really good third uh third depth tight end uh so is that is that your thinking there you think the jags are going to be keeping three tight ends four tight ends or maybe even two tight ends i um i, I think definitely the magic number. i think three is definitely the magic number i think one of those guys koyak or mckever goes to the, the the practice squad for sure maybe even release both of them and use another practice squad on another member but i don't i don't see us having more than three to four on the whole team, whether that be the 53-man roster or the practice squad. All right. So now we're talking former Jaguars on new oh. teams. And, oh, you know, it, it hurts my heart, man. I, it, I, I can't even begin to explain the amount of compassion and true love Jags fans have for Blake Bortles. It's truly, yep. truly amazing. Like, <laughs> With with how much crap we talk about him online, but the second we let him go, you know, we are just crying about it. We're like, bring him back. But it is true, and it is fact. Blake Bortles has signed with the Los Angeles Rams. Jason, what's your take on this signing for the Rams? I am going to be the first to tell you I am a huge part of that. I'm a huge part of that that whole, like, loving Blake Bortles because Blake Bortles, while he may have not been the greatest quarterback of all time, he had really good year 2017, led us to the playoffs. You know, not led us, the defense led us. But he was a really good, you know, part of the backbone of the whole team and just really having a solid year production. Um, I think Nathaniel Hackett, well, that was one of his bright spots, was a, being able to say, okay, we do have a really elite running back. And I'm still going to stay behind that because I love, I love Florida. I'm an LSU fan. I said that, I said that last week. Um, I, think, I think Blake Bortles – I, I mean, I just, I think we should have just, you know, like, 
if we weren't planning on maybe even drafting or going after a quarterback in the, in the later rounds, I think bringing Blake Bowles back for the amount of money that the Rams brought him back for, which is just above the league minimum, I think it would have been even a solid choice. I think he's a probably the best backup quarterback in the NFL that I can think of. Um, I don't see anyone else being able to do the things that he does and the backup position with being able to utilize legs. You know, Sean McVay is a, a quarterback whisperer. You know, Jared Goff two years ago was looked at as a bust from a lot of people's eyes. I didn't see that, but that, according to other people, he's like, oh, Jared Goff's going to be a bust. Carson Wentz a bust, whatever. Sean McVay turned that around, turned that around pretty quickly. And, and now Jared Goff is one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. So if you could do that with Blake Bortles, just or, or not a break because it's not the NBA, but if he, if he gets injured, I think Blake Bortles is a really good, a really good, backup quarterback i think that's great and they signed him for one year one million dollars um that's insanely low i think we could have brought him back but maybe that's kind of like the outlining i think we might go quarterback later draft maybe like third fourth fifth round maybe so i think if we would have done that we would have done that because now the nfl is more so like two quarterback teams so you know and i i just i just want to go back to uh talking about how much jags fans love Blake Bortles. Now, from the outside looking in, if you're not a Jags fan, it's probably it's confusing. It's a confusing relationship that us Jags fans have with Blake Bortles. And just like Jason said, he brought us the 2017 season. And if you're a fan of a team that goes five and eleven, two and fourteen consecutively, 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 once you get a guy that takes, like Jason said, they, he didn't lead us or nothing, but like he he was the quarterback during that 2017 season. And once you have that you know, that exciting moment and all that. And that was your quarterback. Like, I mean, you're going to stick to that and you're going to want him to be around. And again, I don't know if you, uh, if you've seen the video or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> Blake Bortles, when he got signed by the Rams, he, he was recorded and he goes, Hey, I'm Blake Bortles. You just signed with the Rams. Go, go Rams. You know, he, he did not sound like he wanted to be there, you know, and it's, it's, it was like I was a concerned parent. I said this in another video. I was like, I was a concerned parent. I was like, we need to bring Blake home. He's scared. You know, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be away from Jacksonville, you know. And, uh, but like you said, uh, I think this is a good la landing spot for Blake. And I think that uh, him being a good backup quarterback will uh, maybe even get him a starting job down the road somewhere else. So, you know, I'm happy for Blake. I think this is a, uh, a good place for him to be and a place for him to uh, be successful. Now, um, yeah, oh. I, I, I just wanted to butt in real quick. Um, Blake Bortles is really good friends with Jared Goff. And oh, really, man. yeah, he's really good friends with uh, Jared Goff. And I think, I, I, think, I think it's just maybe him being tired from the, the time switch because you go from, you know, Jacksonville, Florida to, you know, L.A. You know, it's, it's a whole I – mean, not, not just even like a, like a time difference. It's a culture difference too. It's so different there. The air is different. It's just – it's it's just different. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's it's just different. It's way different than Jacksonville. Honestly, he's gonna do good there. Like I don't picture a scenario in which he does bad there. I think he's gonna be a really good backup quarterback. Everyone in the whole locker room is gonna love him. He's a proven leader. Every one of the Jaguars, maybe not like from like a confidence standpoint, but all of his teammates here loved him. They loved him. And I remember, and I'm gonna bring this up because. I think it was really one of the coolest videos. It was um, last year when they were going to the playoffs and they're interviewing Calias Campbell and they're talking about like how, you know, you know, Blake's such a true leader. Malik Jackson comes in. He's just like, I want to know what Jarrell Casey thinks. Well, you're sitting at home and we're, we're, we're going to the playoffs. I was, I thought that was the funniest thing because he had never had a good year like that and all of his teammates were just like they were right behind him Blake was leading the pack you know even though the defense was right behind him he was really in there like I am gonna do this we're gonna do this we are going to do this and every one of his teammates were like I had your back Blake every single one of them and I remember this uh when uh Cody Kessler just got benched and Blake came in the game and he he, he said in the huddle he's like all right boys I'm back like we all knew he was not gonna be there after the season but he had that leadership where he was like I'm back, guys. We're, we're gonna win. We're gonna come out with this game, and I'm pretty sure they won that game. I'm pretty sure they ended up winning that game, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they lost. I don't remember. But 
that was just that that made me happy because I remember on Twitter, um, Big Big Cat Country tweeted that, and everyone in the whole comment section had like the gifts of like people crying, like that's my quarterback, that's my quarterback, like yeah. I, that made me so happy because I was like, I'm never gonna be able to see Blake play live again unless he comes to Jacksonville and I go to the game or whatever. But Blake is such a cool guy. Blake is such a nice guy. I've never heard anyone say that Blake is. Um, a bad person or he's weird or he's, you know, rude, always the nicest, most stand up guy, most, you know, respected guy that you could ever see. And I remember one of the, one of the, uh, one of the, I think it was one of the teenagers in Jacksonville stole his, uh, stole his uh, Ford F-150 yeah. and he didn't press charges on him. And I was like, that's so cool. Cause like anyone else in their entire, like anyone else in the entire Jacksonville area would have been like, I'm pressing charges on you. So I mean, yeah. Blake's just a great guy, and I, I, you know, like, he's probably not going to listen to this. If he does, Blake, I miss you, dude. Like, I can't wait to, you know, see you come back home and play against us. Hopefully you do good. Um, you're not going to win, but, yeah. but hopefully hopefully you still have a good game. You know, I, I, I hope you have a successful career, man. I don't know. Yeah, I hopefully you hear this, but, you know, you're a great dude, and I'm really happy that you got to be drafted by the Jaguars, even though we had a couple bad years. going to miss you, dude. You know, and, and I, I've been talking about how uh, I'm going to try and go to Jacksonville this year to, to go to a game. And, you know, if I see the Rams are playing the Jags in the preseason, man, I might have to go. <laughs> I might have to go just to watch Blake Bortles freaking tear up our second stringers, dude. That, that might have to be the game that uh, <laughs> I go and see, dude. That <laughs> preseason That'd Blake Bortles for the Rams, dude. That, that, that's what I have to do. Oh, anyway, coming up next, we're talking about – Jaguars that are no longer on the Jaguars again you know we talked about Blake Bortles uh now we're going to touch on a little bit about Malik Jackson Sean Gibson Jeremy Parnell so Malik Jackson he went to the Philadelphia Eagles uh Sean Gibson went to the Texans Jeremy Parnell went remains unsigned oh he remains unsigned okay that's not necessarily surprising so I guess now it's kind of a debate between Malik Jackson and Sean Gibson which one of those players do you think is going to have the more successful season with their new team? Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about all three. Okay. Um, talk about all three. Gibson, I think, will probably have a really good year. And I would still say Malik Jackson is still very productive. Um, he's going to go – Gibson, I, they're both starters on, their, on both teams. They're both starters. Um, Malik Jackson is going to be on the defensive line for the – and Gibson is going to be a starter for the uh, – the Texans. Both, yeah. um, both playoff teams. Yeah. What did I say? Did I say the guys in Texans? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm really bad at that. That's um, all good, dude. Don't worry about they're it. They're both gonna be starters, though. They're gonna be. They're gonna be starters both teams. Um, they're both on playoff teams. Um, Eagles gonna go to playoffs this year, unless Tristan Wentz just keeps getting injured, which I don't, I don't know why he keeps getting injured because I don't know. I, I don't know why he keeps getting injured. He just missed a lot of games the last two years, which prompted Nick Foles coming to us because he really showed out, but. Um, I think Malik Jackson is going to have a really decent year, but with defensive lines in the NFL, they like to switch them out for fresh legs. So I, I think Gibson is going to have the overall better year bearing injury because he's going to be starting more. I think he's going to be on the field more. Um, Malik Jackson, I think, is going to be subbed in a lot on pass rushing plays. Um, I, I just think I think Gibson will have a really good year for the Texans, and I'm so scared to go against him because I feel like he's going to play with an edge. Parnell. I really didn't like Parnell. I really, 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 really did not like Parnell. His first year was his best year here. He blocked like a freaking like beast his first year. And then after that, even during the playoff run, he was so freaking bad. He was literal dog poop, like yeah. literal dog shit. Like, I mean, was so astronomically bad. I literally hated watching him block. I wouldn't even look at the right side of the line. I was looking at the left side because it was, it was, it was AJ can. And then Parnell, and I just, oh, my God, I did not want to watch that at all because that was the worst. That was, Blake got sacked so many times from that, like, side of the line. Um, oh, my gosh. I just could not stand Parnell because he'd always get penalties. He would get, you know, like, unnecessary roughness. Like, we would just be in a good spot to, like, you know, like, have a spark on our offense, and he would just be so bad. Be so bad, and he would just ruin everything. I just – I hope he does good. He's definitely going to get picked up for depth along the line because like I said in the last podcast um you know linemen drop like five flies so I think Parnell will definitely be signed at some point 
I don't know when it's going to be. It could be preseason, probably before preseason to just try out for a team. But I think during the season at some point, he'll have a permanent home for the rest of the year because people do need quality depth offensive line, and there's not many people like that. And while I don't like Parnell, he's not the worst blocker I've ever seen. That would definitely have to go to Luke Jokel. Um, yeah. I talked about that uh, not too long ago uh, when I was talking about uh, – I was raking every – Jaguar first round pick, dude. Luke Jokel. Oh my gosh. It's like a revolving door, man. Like even in Seattle when he was playing the guard position, man, he was a revolving door. They just he, they, he doesn't know where, what position to play. I, I don't even know if he's on a team right now. Is he still with the Se- uh, Seahawks? I mean, I think I think he actually got extended. I think Seattle extended him actually. Cuz he he didn't play horribly from what I heard. He didn't play awful. So I think he did get an – you know, he might have gotten a stitch. I'm going to have to look into that. We'll talk about that next time if we want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, well, everybody's curious about what uh, Luke Jokel's up to these days. But <laughs> no, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think they both are going to be successful uh, on their new teams. But I think Malik Jackson really balls out this year. I think that pairing him with this Philadelphia Eagles defensive line that's already really, really stout, even though, like you said, there's going to be some rotations or whatever. But – Maybe a bold take. I think Malik Jackson reaches double-digit sacks. I think he's going to be no able. No way. You, you don't. You don't think so? I'll put a money bet on that, dude. I'll <laughs> definitely put a money bet because he didn't even reach double-digit sacks when he was with us. Yeah, I. I and he's that... he start. He's going to start way more on us than he would have ever with the Eagles. I will put like thirty dollars on that right now. One hundred dollars on weird it. Number? Uh, Why'd you pick thirty? <laughs> I'll put thirty. I'll, I'll put a hundred bucks on it, dude. Like I don't think. He is gonna get double digit sacks. I don't think that at all. And I just like that's that's a more bold take than me being like DJ Charts to go for twelve hundred yards and like fifteen touchdowns. That is not you. a more bold take. That is a way. Yes, it is. You're yes, because it, you're, you're you're saying that Malik Jackson, who has never had more, I, and you can maybe quote me on this. Maybe I'm wrong, but he's never had more than ten sacks in a year. That has never happened. I think the most is like nine or eight. And he's going to a really good defensive line in Philadelphia. He is not going to be starting like all the snaps. The he started majority of his snaps last year when he went to the Pro Bowl, and he didn't even have ten sacks then. Like he was a decent part of the defensive line, but he did not. He's not hitting ten sacks. I'm sorry, it's not happening. That's the worst bull take I've heard in my life. Like you might as well just go. Might as well go debate that with Stephen A. Smith on ESPN because that is the worst bull take. That I'm, we need to. I need you to tweet that. I want you to tweet that, and then I'm gonna tag cold hard uh, takes, and then they're gonna like they're gonna like retweet it, and then like they'll 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 hit you back up in a year when you're wrong. Back when when Malik Jackson gets like three sacks or something like. That. <laughs> no, he's probably like, gonna have three sacks. Like you said, man, he's part of a good defensive line unit, and I mean, rotational players can still get a lot of sacks. I mean, you look at Dante Fowler Jr. He came in. On I think what was it forty percent of the snaps he still got eight and a half sacks. I think Malik Jackson's taking this opportunity to go to Philadelphia to revitalize his career with a really good uh, playoff team, and he's gonna have fresh legs in the potential. He's in the rotation, and I think he's gonna make the most out of that. And once he gets a starting opportunity, I think you know what, and that's let's 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 let the people debate. Hopefully they're they're enjoying this one. Leave it comment section down below. Malik Jackson, how many sacks is he gonna get over or under? Eight over or under eight. So. No, 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 no. Hold on, now, kids. No, 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 no. Over, over, under ten. We're gonna stick with the ten because you think that you're slick and that you think <laughs> that he's gonna freaking go like ten sacks. It's not happening. Ten sacks is like Pro Bowl numbers. He's not gonna be a Pro Bowler on the Eagles. He's gonna be lights out. One hundred percent might even get six or seven, maybe even eight. But he's not going for ten. If he goes for ten. I will. I don't know what I'll do, dude. We can decide that, like, in like, a couple <laughs> weeks or or when the season starts. Like, all right, hey, remember that? Like, we'll 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 figure it out. But I'm I'm telling you right now, I'll put a hundred cash on Malik Jackson under ten sacks this year. You know, and the thing is, is that you you got this thing about how ten sacks is such a bold take, but you're like, well, maybe he'll get eight. Eight's only two less than ten. Like that's not. But you have to think about it. Eight is a more common number for a defensive line who doesn't start like. I mean, he's not Aaron Donald. He's you know he's not you know Sa from 2013. You know he's like he's not like he's good, but he is above average towards good 
at his very best. He is not an elite pass rusher. It's not who he is. He's never, it's never who he's been. He's always been a very in the middle, like a very good run defender and a very good pass defender. He's never or a, a pass rusher. He's never ever getting been elite in one of those. He's just always been very good in both. And that was when he was in his elite, which I would say his last year in Denver and his first couple of years with Jacksonville. He's not going to hit ten sacks. It is two less, but you have to think about it. Not every sack that you make is yours. So if you hit a defender, if you if you hit a quarterback with a, with another defender, that's like a half a sack. If you if if all three if, you know like the defenders that are rushing the quarterback hit him, that's a, you know third. You know every time he probably gets a sack, he's he he probably had maybe three or four of him, of just him, and the rest have been all like him hitting quarterback sack. So in all honesty, ten doesn't seem like a lot. But he might get 8.5, you know, 8.7. That's pretty decent for someone who's going to be where he's going to be. That's, I would say that's the ceiling. 8, 8.9, you know, maybe even 9 sacks would be the absolute ceiling for Lee Johnson. And that, he has to have a great year that, to have that. So who's, who's the starting – Philadelphia, who's their starting for? Who's Philadelphia's starting for? I, I, I think Fletcher Cox is going to be right next to him. I don't know their Ed rushers. Um, well, because he might start. He might be a starter at the other. He's, he's going to be, but he's going to, I'm telling you, the NFL with defense, they always switch out their defensive line. Yeah, I, I know. When, that, when, yeah. When, when the Legion of Boom was huge, they had, I remember, oh my gosh, they had Michael Bennett. What was that? What was that defensive tackle that we signed that was with the uh, Seahawks that brought over with Gus Bradley? What oh, was his name? Brian Meebane. Is that his name? No, no, no. no, no it, was, uh, it was, was a Red Bryant. Red Bryant. That's Red, Red Bryant. Bryant. He was not a bad defensive tackle, but he was only in for the first down of every single down because it was a run play normally. And that's when he played for us. That wasn't such a bad signing. That was a, such a horrible signing. But Remember who else we signed from Seattle? Who? A defensive lineman, defensive end. I'm drawing a blank here. It was Chris Clemens. You remember him? I thought we drafted him. No, we brought him. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. And then now he, he plays for the Titans now, I think. Does he, does he still no, the, play? Still oh, play? No, that's Andre Branch. Or, or that's Andre Branch. Maybe yeah. I'm, I don't know. Clemens? Clemens was – he was so inconsistent. He got like six sacks one year, and like we're like, oh, there we go. We got him. We got him. Don't worry. And then <laughs> – Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley, like, just like, you know, like freaking playing with him in the back, like in the locker room, like playing like – in like rock paper scissors, like some stupid shit, like, like just because he's his boy or whatever. Him and Red Bryant would all just in a circle, and no, I can't say that on the a thing, but <laughs> big old circle <laughs> jerk, fuck. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, yeah, I guess we're saying it. Then yeah, he's a big old circle jerk. Like, oh, we were, we were leading the boom. Like, fuck you guys. We're in Jacksonville now. Like, we got the Leo Rusher, dude. We got Leo Rusher. Oh my god, I could. The amount of times that Gus Bradley said Leo <laughs> was enough to make me have cancer. Like. <laughs> And excuse me to all the people who have cancer out there because fuck cancer, it's not, you know, fun. But literally would, like, literally give me a disease that would make me want to die. Every time I heard I, – I, I've never heard Leo in my entire life before, like, Gus Bradley came in and was the, uh, the head coach of the Jaguars. And I miss Gus Bradley and all honesty. He was a cool guy. Really did really good stuff here in Jacksonville. But was the worst head coach I've ever seen in my life. Um but I know we're not talking about this for much longer. This is off, way off topic. We're just getting into that's like, what podcasts like, are, man. You got to go on tangents and shit. We yeah, went from, we went from we went from a fucking big old debate about Malik Jackson getting Ted Sachs to talking about Red Bryant and fucking Chris Clement. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! I, I, dude! Oh my god! I think Gus Bradley's doing really good with the San Diego Chargers. Now that I'm thinking about it, their defense is pretty okay this year. You know what else? If I had a nickel for every time somebody called the Chargers, the San Diego Chargers still, I'd have a million dollars. They're still the San Diego Chargers, dude. They, they, they are. They, that's what they – dude, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't debate with that. I think that he's doing a good job with them defensively. Especially that he did a really good job uh, game planning for Lamar Jackson in the playoffs when they played the Ravens. Oh, I love Lamar Jackson. I love Lamar Jackson so much. Do you? Well, he, he won the Heisman. He won the Heisman as a freshman, I think, or as a sophomore. I was freshman. I, year. He was nineteen. I I love Lamar Jackson, and I I think he might he might be a bust in some people's eyes, but I don't think he is, dude. I think Lamar Jackson is going to be so special for you know like uh, Baltimore. 
And I think it's kind of dumb that they're letting Joe Flacco go. I think they should have restructured his deal. And I, maybe he, maybe they're doing that. I don't know what's going on over there, to be honest. I'm not going to Flacco went to the but... Broncos. Oh, did he? Yeah. I think John Elway was right. I don't think Flacco hit his prime yet. Mm-hmm. He had a couple good years. He had a couple good years, yes. But I genuinely think he's still going to be a really good quarterback. I think, I think just – if they can get a good offensive line, get a couple more weapons on the offensive side of the ball, um, I think realistically Joe Flacco will have a really good year this year. You know you're going to get Aiden alive in the comment section, dude. All my all my supporters fucking hate Joe Flacco. I got so much flock for it because I made a video and I was talking. I was like, you know, I wouldn't mind having Joe Flacco in Jacksonville. I got like 10 comments. <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. Why would you want Joe Flacco? You know? But do you- I mean – Realistically, Joe Flacco just needs a good supporting cast. He's a system quarterback, 100%. And I think, I think over in, I think over in, you know, Denver, I think he's gonna be okay. I think he will be just okay. Yeah, that's just enough. Fair. Just enough to win some games, maybe even a playoff appearance, a wild card appearance. Unless they go out and like get some crazy, like just make some crazy trade. But there's no, there's no really any receivers that are going on the trade market anymore. Um, unless something happens, which I completely don't think it will because you can't really have contact with your players during this part of the season. So um, up until the draft, at least. But I just think that if they can just maybe draft a really good receiver um, and just develop some guys from under the free agency, I think that Joe Black will have a good year. You know, uh, this is good. I, I like I like this discussion we're having right now. I want to go back to uh, Lamar Jackson, actually. I want to okay, okay. I want to I want to say that I seen a tweet the other day from Ryan Day, Ryan Easton. Yep, I saw the same I saw the same tweet. I saw the same tweet. <laughs> Let me I'm I'm going to say I'm going to say the tweet. It's basically saying if the Jags were to draft Lamar Jackson last year and the 2017 season panned out the same way and we benched Bortles for Jackson, you know, we would have been in a way worse spot. And I agree with that. I what? Agree. I agree with that. Dude, Lamar Jackson's going to be a bust. There's no there's no way he's not. Dude, okay, like, did you not see him in the playoffs when they – okay, it took it took a while for defenses to figure him out. He's just like RG3. He's just like RG3. He looked in the playoff game. He fumbled the ball three times. I'm with you, though. Like, I was a big Lamar a ro- Jackson. But he's a rookie, though. He's a rookie. Of course we're not going to have the same success with someone who literally had 35, you know, like trash time touchdowns and – 2014, 2015. You know, he's not gonna he's not gonna be a speedboat. He's gonna be speedy as hell, but he might crash the boat, obviously, his first year. But I'm telling you, dude, Lamar Jackson is not gonna be a bust. He might not be elite, but I'm telling you right now, I know he's good friends with Deshaun Watson. I know he's good friends with Patrick Mahomes. I know they're probably gonna work out this offseason. He is not a bust. I don't care what anyone thinks. You can tear me up in the comment section. I might be wrong one day, but right now I'm sticking my, you know, 10 toes down in the sand, and I'm saying Lamar Jackson's not a bust. Absolutely not. I will, will, I'm willing to put $100. I'm, I'm going to put bets on everything tonight, <laughs> dude. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a bet on everything tonight, dude. Honestly, like, Lamar Jackson's not a bust, dude. I don't care what anyone says. Like, he just needs to, like, work with um, the Baltimore coaches a little bit more. He had literally came as a rookie – Started half the games because Joe Flacco was just like, meh. Like, he's going to be fine. He's going to be okay. Not really too many rookie quarterbacks come in halfway through the season when the season's kind of already lost and just be like, okay, um, I'm going to lead us to the Super Bowl. Like, that never happens. He led them to a playoff appearance when they weren't even going to make the playoffs. And he did that. Like, he was kind of like Tim Tebow. And I hate Tim Tebow. I like him as a person, but just probably the worst – Player I've seen I, ever. I have to disagree with the fact that it looked like they did they weren't going to make the playoffs because the AFC North last year was in shambles. Like everybody had an opportunity to win the AFC North, and Lamar Jackson came in. I think like in week six, he went like eight, nine, ten, and one or whatever, and he was the talk of the town because no one knew how to stop him. He's fast, and then he finally faced the same team twice. Unless he faced somebody in the division twice, which I don't think he did, to be honest. I think he played each one once. When he played someone twice, finally, he got shut down. He got shut down bad. Like, really they bad. They couldn't shut down his legs, though. That was, that, that's the key thing. 
everyone was comparing him to Michael Vick, which I think is absurd. I think you, if you have a break, a handbrake, you need to smack that thing together as hard as you can and pump those brakes as hard as you can because he's not Michael Vick. It's not the Michael Vick show yet. He's fast like Michael Vick, but he, he doesn't have the arm like Michael Vick. Just no, yet. that's so the think, problem, man. He can't throw it all. He can't throw it. Yes, he play. can. I'm telling you, he can throw it. He can throw it far. He's just not accurate when he throws, when he throws far. So if you give him a year to develop, I think I almost said, I almost said Michael Jackson. I don't know why. I don't think like that. <laughs> uh, Lamar Jackson is going to be fine. Lamar Jackson will be fine. Quote me on this in a year when the Baltimore Ravens go 16-0 and and then 19-0 and up in the playoffs, okay? Call me on that when it happens, right? That's more likely to happen than freaking Malik Jackson hitting 10 sacks. Oh, fucking fuck yourself, dude. That's I'm, a- just I'm just I'm joking. I'm just joking. But, like, but like, come on, dude. Like, Malik Jackson's not hitting 10 sacks, and Lamar Jackson's not going to be a bust. That's, that's it. We're moving on to the next topic. Let's go on to the really difficult schedule in 2019. We have the third most difficult schedule, and, man, it does not look good. Um, we have the hardest, some of the hardest teams in, of the generation we have to play next year, three of them. Um, it is going to be highlighted by the Chiefs, the Rams, and the Saints. Oh, my gosh. And they're all within, like, a few weeks of each other. Like, I think, like, a, like a seven- or eight-week span. They're all right there. And within those seven to eight weeks, we also have teams that have really inconsistency, but I'm also still scared of still that aren't going to be as good as the Chiefs, the Rams, and the Saints. I just realized I spelled Chiefs wrong. How do you spell Chiefs wrong? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we have teams like the Falcons and the Panthers that we have to go through as well. Um, I went through it. Um, I didn't write down all the teams that we're playing, but I know we obviously play the, the Houston Texans, the Titans, and what am I missing? Other team from South. Who is it? The Colts. Exactly. Yeah, right. Um I think we sweep one of those teams. They're all really decent teams. When they're, when they're playing at their best, the Titans, the Colts, and the, and, the, and the Texans, they all know us. They all are familiar with our systems. It's so hard to beat one, of them, one another. It's so hard to score against our own divisional teams because we play against them twice a year, and we play against them sometimes even in the playoffs. Um, so I think we sweep one of those teams. I don't think it's going to be the Colts. I think it'll be more like the tech, Texans or the Titans. Tight. I think I think we might win one of each of those games too, and I think our ceiling right now, as it stands, is going to be eleven and five. I think that it's going to be so hard to win more than eleven games, and it's going to be crucial to win eleven more than eleven games. Um, I think we could win win more than eleven games, but it really has to come down to like winning each and every individual battle between our um, our say our, our groups like our secondary our defensive line our offensive line our wide receivers our running backs and our quarterbacks we have to out play each single team and i think our floor this is i might be stupid for saying this but i think it's eight and eight i i i think we i think we win the, the games that we should win but i just we could be much worse than that but i just don't think i think if nick Foles comes in and really does his job i think i think the floor is eight and eight you know, the thing is, is that everybody in the comment section, if they get this far, which, which they will, it's quality podcast content, why would they not? Oh, yeah. But, Hopefully. But, um, <laughs> well, I mean, like, off topic, but, you know, they, they, they grade, well, they, they tell you, like, your viewer, your average viewer uh, watch time. And yeah. uh, we had a 10-minute watch time, which is, that, that doesn't sound good on paper, but that's incredibly good. Like, usually people, like, in 33-minute videos watch it four or five minutes, so. People are digging this yeah. podcast. But anyway, we're going back to the major topic at hand here. So people are going to like you more in the comment section because I posted this video yesterday and no one liked my uh, pessimism because oh, uh, man. I'm going to have to say I, I looked at it and like you said, we play the Chiefs, we play the Browns, we play the Saints and Falcons, Panthers. I, I can't trust the fact that we could beat the Titans until we fucking beat the Titans. We haven't beat the Titans. <laughs> Like you, can, you know, that's I'm gonna, a big thing. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this real quick. I don't mean to interrupt you, but every and everyone's gonna hate me because I'm gonna say this, and then it's gonna make much more sense as to why we keep losing to the Titans. Four games in the last two years, I have been to each single or uh, two games in the last two years. I've been to each single Titans game, every single one, and we lost both of them. Lost both of them the every time. I am jinxing the Jacksonville Jaguars against the Titans. It's because I want, them to, I want to beat them so bad because our defense is so much better than them. I don't like Marcus Mariota. I like, I, I like him as a player, but I don't like – I just 
he just so injury prone yeah. like grow up dude like i remember last year he didn't like i remember last year being like oh we're playing against blaine gabber we're gonna destroy this kid <laughs> right dude. bro we destroyed blaine gabber oh my god it was i was laughing in my seat dude that shit freaking got me like Mary- i was laughing i was laughing in my seat when i saw blaine gabber just get sacked like three plays in a row and blaine gabber's like limping off the field it just remind me of like a, i forget it was like a movie of just this defensive line killing this quarterback. I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't want to play. Like, Blaine Gabbert looked like he did not want to play a single amount of football ever again in his life after he played the first quarter. And then I remember Marcus Mariota came in when and lit us up. Like, he lit us up. He had, I think he had like a, a nerve damage in his hand, which prevented him from gripping the football. And he lit us up. He tore us up. He couldn't throw, like, the line drive, like, throws, but he could really, like, he really tore us up. I just feel like if he could just be more consistent, he would get a bigger payday. I think he's coming up for a contract extension again in a year or two. He just got to stay healthy. I just don't like Marcus. I don't like quarterbacks that can't fight through things. I think if you fight through things, you're going to be fine. Like, you have the best coaching staff. You have the best medical staff in the entire world at your disposal, and you're still going to sit out games unless you have something broken or torn please don't sit out of a game because we saw Blake Bortles take so many hits. He, I remember, I remember like no one, I think no one talked about this because it was very rare, but I heard someone tell me while I was walking by one of the media, um, one of the media outlets that Blake Bortles, like uh, one of his middle fingers was crooked, like super badly. And they just snapped it back into place. And he went back out there the next, and then second half and just played. I was like, what? Blake Bortles literally broke his finger, went back out with no gloves on, they wrapped, they wrapped it up with, like, a little bit of tape. That was it. And threw the football. And we won the game, it was like, in 2017. And that was just – that blows my mind, that you could be so tough and go out there and just still play. So, I just don't like Marcus Mariota. Um, I forgot what we were talking about, though. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> dragging, dragging it back to the topic at hand here. So, um, we're talking floor and ceiling for Jaguar wins. And like I said, people in the comment section are going to – they're going to like you a lot more than me because I'm – I like you too, guys. I'm a, I'm a little bit more hesitant to say that the Jags are going to be able to pull off 11 wins. If I had what's their s- ceiling? What's their what's their ceiling? What's their ceiling to you? My floor is four. My floor, oh no, my floor is. Four. If we go four, if we hit four wins, I'm throwing Nick Foles. I'm not even. He's not even packing his shit. I'm getting Nick Foles and I'm throwing him out of his house. I'm throwing him in the St. John's River, and he, I'm tying cinder blocks to his feet. Hopefully that boy can swim because I remember – I think someone told me that he was a swimmer in high school. Nick Foles is never playing a down at football in Jacksonville again. If we paid him $50 million in guaranteed money and we hit four wins – Tree, listen, brother. <laughs> if, if we hit four wins, I'm not a fan of Jacksonville anymore. I am – I'm just like – I'm so done because that would be the most Jacksonville thing in the world. To That's do what I'm saying. You got to prepare for the most Jacksonville things, dude. Brother, I think you. I I think that is the uh, the comment section. Please, please. Oh my gosh, please tear him up, please. Like That's, I just I, I got tore up yesterday <laughs> all day in the comments because I said that. But I got I got a four of four because hopefully we address the wide receiver position a little bit better. But we I, have Chark and we have Westbrook. We don't need anyone else besides him and then Conley, and we're fine. Okay, guys, I think that Chark and Westbrook, they're going to be fine. They're going to be great, and Conley's going to be a good uh, piece for them as well. We might draft the receiver in the second or third round. I think that'd be smart. Um, but I'm going to say I, my ceiling is going to be 10, just so I – Okay, I'm I okay with that. I won't get as much flock because last time I said four and nine and everybody got really fucking pissed. Well, I mean, you can't hit four and nine because, I mean, you get more games in the season. But. You know what I meant. The floor was nine. Four and, and 12. Come four, on. 16 yeah. games. Get good nah, at the game. Nah, I'm talking about the floor being four and the ceiling being nine. That's what I meant. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and throw the Blake Bortles. Know the rules. <laughs> Shut up. Know the rules. All right. Well, this very debate heavy laugh, laugh out loud comedy uh, podcast. I think we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you guys again for watching the Jags week in review with me and my buddy, Jason. I really enjoy bringing him on. I really enjoy doing these podcasts. So again, if you haven't already, you can check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook at Trey Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trey Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to so get notified. Every single time I drop a new video. Also, if you want to watch this, uh, 
or just listen to this on SoundCloud, you can, and that link will also be in the description down below. Jason, got any party words? Um, yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Secret Society. It's uh, spelled S-E-C-R-E-T-T-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y. I almost forgot how to spell that. So Secret Society on Instagram. Um, I post a lot of political shit on my Twitter, so I'm not sure if you guys want to follow that. But if you want to, it's going to be safe in your skin with an extra N at the end of skin. So follow me on both of those. You can uh, just subscribe to Tree and do that now because if you do, he'll give you a big old hug and we'll make cookies for you. So do that and have a good rest of your night, guys. And make sure to come back to this video to see if Jason loses $200. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to, okay. First of all, the next podcast is not going to be at the end of the next season. Okay. So yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, Malik Jackson is not getting 10 sacks. Lamar Jackson is not a bust. I'm ending it off with that. Um, I'm just, I'm going to be $200 richer. Let's be real here. I'm going to be $200 richer, but I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. All right. You guys have a good rest of your day. Peace out.